Welcome back. This is Dan Heavey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we are going to answer Nicole's question over here in the ClickFunnels official group, and she wants to know how she can set something up that looks pretty much similar to this. So I'm going to walk through the steps very quickly because in um, Eduardo's answer down here, he had a lot of it right, except there's one problem is he said you can use a text element and give it rounded corners. Unfortunately, you can't do that as she is very specific without custom code. So let me show you how you can do this in inside of ClickFunnels. So we're going to come in here and we're going to start off by making a, uh, we're going to make a full page section and then we're going to put a four column row into that section. So here is our row and you can come into your row and you can change the width of it, the padding, all that kind of stuff. For our example here, we don't really need to worry about that, but you would have to do it uh, to fit your design. And then we're going to come in here and we are going to drop in a headline element and we're just going to leave it as is for right now because we're going to come into our settings and let's just so we can see it a little bit better we're going to click on override because I don't know what kind of style sheet I may or may not have on here and so we have our um, we have our, our letters there you can see them now and we're going to come down and we're going to say we want to put in a background and she had kind of a gray background in the call in the background of her so let's just kind of put in a gray background there and let's see what else she had some white text and it said week one so let's just uh, do this up the way she had it week one and we'll go in and we will make that text color white now the problem is, like I said, is we're going to come down here to the bottom and you're going to see there is no option down here for uh, being able to put any corners on this. So that's not going to work. So another option that we could have is we could use a button element. So come in here, we're going to add in this, um, we're going to add in a button element and we'll do the rest of it here very quickly. We'll come down here, we'll click our override and we're going to change our background to a custom grayish color right there we will leave um, the uh, we'll change the text here and then we have an issue where it's not wide enough so we come down here and we will say full width enabled so now we are the full width and it seems a little too tall for what she was looking for so let's take out some of that vertical padding you can see right here we can take down that vertical padding uh, the sides won't matter at this point because we said go full width so this can be set to whatever you want and of course it will pick up your style guide as well and so in this case here I should have really clicked this over here to turn off the style guide but we got our colors and and our fonts and everything else so now we're gonna come in here we're gonna come down to our corners and we are going to say we want all the corners let's just say we want them all to be 25 pixels and so now we have a corner the only issue you're going to have is you want to make sure you come up here and click on nothing happens now i found that even when you click on nothing happens it doesn't necessarily work right so here would be a little teeny tiny bit of code but i'll show you it um, if you choose to go the route of using this button to make sure it works works you want to come in here and you want to say go to we're going to go to custom action link and we'll just click on this and I already have it pre-populated in here it will say javascript colon the word void and then within parentheses a zero that will definitely kill any action inside of this button but now so we got our button up here at the top that would be clickable so if you wanted to be able to have this set up so that somebody could come in here they see like the synopsis of week one this is a button so when you hover over the button the the hover colors will change out so everybody knows that it's a button when they hover over it and then you can send them off to the week one classes. So that would be a good case where you would definitely want to use a button here. And of course, in that case, you would have a link to wherever you wanted them to go to. So now the next thing we have to do is build out the lower section because we got clearly two different rows here. So we're gonna build out the lower section and we're gonna come in and we're gonna add a row and we're gonna put in another four column row. Now, the first thing we need to do is to deal with this uh, outer border. She's got a border all the way around there so we'll come in and we're gonna go to our column at this point and we're going to make sure we don't have any margin or anything on the column make it as wide as we can we're going to put in a border and I'm just gonna make it a couple 
pixels wide just so you can all see it as I'm working here and then we are going to put in the same corners we had before on 25 pixels on the corner so we got some corners there and then we're gonna probably want like 20 pixels of padding at the top and 20 padding at the bottom and then I think that's all we want for now. So then we can put in here a, um, we're just going to drop in a paragraph element. So again, she has some text up here at the top, and then she had these brownish, tannish colored uh, boxes down here. So we got a little bit of text up here at the top. Well, okay, it's running out to the edges, so we don't want that. So we want to come in here and click so we get to the column, which I did not do. So you got to click on that gear. We're going to come into the column and again here let's just say we want 15 pixels uh, that's probably not enough let's uh, bump that up to 20 pixels so we got 20 pixels right here so again style it however you want but we got a little space around the sides we got some at the top and we got some at the bottom now again if we want to then just clone this element and then if we did that we want to put in let's say 20 pixels worth of padding at the top but then we could come in and we could change the background color and all that but we can't affect the uh, we can't affect the borders again or the the rounded corners is what we want so we won't want to do this so we're gonna kill this we don't want to use buttons because there's a lot of text for a button and we don't really want to do that so what we can do is inside of click funnels you can add a section as an element so anywhere you can put in an element you could put in a section in its place so we're gonna say add this element we're gonna come over here and click on sections we're gonna go to a full page section because we want this to always be a hundred percent of the width of the bounding column that it is inside of so we did that we just need a one column row inside of there and inside of that we are going to put in a paragraph now we got some styling we have to do because one thing here you're going to see we um, we have our green box here which is our section we have our blue box which is our row and then we have our element which is our orange box and so in this case here there should not be any kind of padding or anything around the outside of this uh, element itself so let's go to the column and we want to take out all of the padding so we're going to take out the padding for the column right here and anytime you want to move around inside of an element and move upward you can only go one direction in here we are now at our column but we have breadcrumbs up here at the top so now we can just click this and go to the row and we're going to say in the row we don't want any side padding in that row and uh, we do let's leave the top and bottom padding in here right now what I probably should have done is done the section first and then work inward but either way you want to do it is fine and so then we have our row now you're going to see right here at this point here I can't find the row anymore because uh, at least coming in from the sides because I there's no more padding there anymore so basically the outer edge of the row is the same as the outer edge of the section so again that's the reason why you come in here you would click on your element and you would work backwards to where it says row here and then you could affect your row but in this case here we're just looking for our green box which is our section so we're going to go to our section and again in here we want to take out that side padding also what we want to do is we want to give this a background of a she had kind of a brownish color i don't know how to do that so we're just gonna we're just gonna make it this gray color here just for illustrative purposes and for our corners we're going to come down and we're going to make those corners 25 and now we're starting to get close to what she had so she's got the text inside of here and now we need to work on our padding that's why like i said i probably should have turned the background of the section first and then worked my way out from there so now let's come in here and we can say inside of this we can do some side padding so we're inside the section now and here we can just do 10 pixels of side padding because it didn't look like she had very much in here so let's just say we want 10 pixels there and then let's just say we want 10 pixels at the top well okay let's yeah let's do this here let's do uh, do it uniformly so we'll do 10 pixels at the top 10 pixels at the bottom because then we must have also then some padding at the top and bottom of that row so let's come into our row we do and we should be able to take that then down to zero and we're going to have our 10 pixels 
all the way around. Now again for me it looks like we probably need a little bit more on the side here so again let's see if we can get into our section we can come in here and let's just I can just click on the numbers over here and I can use my up arrow and I can say okay let's go up to 15 pixels instead and then there we go so then in order to do the rest on the page we would just clone this like this and we would have to come in now to each individual section come on let me in there and we're going to have to put in some top margin so we'll just say 15 for now and we'll do the same here real quick come in here type in 15 or pull the slider whatever you would like and then there is no way to duplicate this column so we'd have to come over here into this same column and let's go back here look at our settings we had 20 20 20 and we had uh, 25 on our corner so we come in here the same thing we uh, do 20 20 20 take out the margin put in some uh, corners of 25 pixels and we also need a border on there as well of a couple pixels oops that's getting a little bit big now the problem is now we're all bunched up next to each other so we have to think okay where can we move these two elements apart and where you again would do that in your margin so let's come into our margin and put in five margin there come back over to this row and we'll say five margin there five pixels of margin on either side and now again oops you got a little bit more there but um, you get the idea of what you need to do in order to make that work so I think I showed you everything you need to know of course up here once you decide on how you want to do it you can then just clone it and then once you clone it you can drag it over like that if you want to use the buttons but also up here at the top you could do the exact same thing we could do a section a uh, full full page section a one column row then inside of our let's just put in a headline element inside of our one column row and now this time here we'll start from the section out we'll go to a background we'll give it a background color of something grayish and we will give it some corners of let's give it like 25 on the corners and then of course we better give it a little bit of margin otherwise it's jammed up against the other one and then what else do we need to do we probably don't want any padding top or bottom in here probably get rid of the side padding as well and then um, well let me just see here let's just type in week one because we're probably don't need to fuss around with it quite as much on this one and let's make this a little bit bigger and now we could take out some top padding there and then again you get to play around and decide um, okay we're going to the padding here now whether you have padding in the margin or the row or the element normally it won't make a difference sometimes it will uh, but especially at the top and the bottom is what I'm talking about here so it's up to you to decide which one you want to do again here side padding shouldn't matter because we have that being a hundred percent of the width of that column and again of course if the buttons are not wide enough we can come into this column here and take out the margin and make the buttons even wider or the column or the text element whatever you choose to use so there is a few different ways on how you can set that up if you have any questions just let me know